Hey y'all, as you can see, I'm still pregnant. I did not get that full moon baby that I was hoping for. As of now, I am 39 weeks and four days pregnant, and as a midwife, I know I have the option to induce my labor. We used to routinely recommend induction for women at 39 weeks who were over the age of 35, or geriatric, which I am, I just turned 36. And we also used to routinely recommend induction between 39 and 40 weeks for women who conceived via IVF. However, contrary to popular belief, those are no longer the current recommendations. Today, I want to briefly talk about why that is and why I'm choosing to wait for spontaneous labor, even though I'm over it and I'm feeling pretty haggard. Welcome back to Every Mom is Midwife. If you're new, my name's Jess. I'm a certified nurse midwife and infertility mom, and I'm currently pregnant with my second baby, which I did conceive via IVF. As always, this video is not intended to replace a conversation with your healthcare provider. I'm just going to go over my thought process as a midwife and as a mama who wants a low intervention birth. When I first started practicing as a midwife seven years ago, I do remember inducing a few moms between the 39 and 40 week mark because they had conceived via IVF, but I am not sure that that recommendation came from ACOG or the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, or if it was just a widely used standard of care. This recommendation stemmed from an increased risk of stillbirth in women who conceived via IVF. As of right now, ACOG does not recommend inducing at 39 weeks just for IVF, and when you look at the research, it makes sense. In most available studies, there's actually not a significant increased risk of stillbirth in pregnancies conceived via IVF, and in the few studies specifically, there was a large Danish study that showed an increased risk of stillbirth. Those stillbirths occurred prior to term, meaning prior to the 37-week mark, and so typically an induction is not going to decrease that risk of stillbirth. When I first started as a midwife, we also routinely recommended induction for women over the age of 35 at 39 weeks, again, because of the increased risk of stillbirth. And this recommendation did come from ACOG. Um, and it's something that I've done until very recently, or at least something that I've offered my patients until very recently. The current ACOG recommendation is to offer induction at 39 weeks to women aged 40 and older because the risk of stillbirth in this population is similar as the risk of stillbirth at 39 weeks to women in their early to mid-20s. That risk is still quite low, but it is statistically significant. ACOG themselves has stated that this is a weak recommendation based on moderate quality evidence, and a lot of times they'll make recommendations and then say based on low, moderate, or high quality evidence. In the same article, which I'll link in the description in case you want to read it, ACOG then goes on to say that for women in the 35 to 39 age bracket, the evidence for elevated stillbirth risk is not sufficient to support a clear recommendation regarding timing of delivery in the absence of additional comorbidities. It's worth noting that women who conceive after the age of 35 or 40 and women who conceive via IVF are more likely to have comorbidities or other health conditions that put their babies at risk. Conditions like type 2 diabetes, gestational diabetes, chronic high blood pressure, or preeclampsia. As a provider, I would make a much stronger recommendation for induction if one of these conditions was present at 39 weeks or possibly even earlier. If no additional risk factors are present, I usually tell my patients that both choosing induction or waiting for spontaneous labor are both reasonable options, especially because a lot of my patients want a low intervention birth, which is absolutely not what you're going to get if you opt for an induction. With an induction, Pitocin is usually unavoidable, and you're much more likely to go down that path of the cascade of interventions, um, which I discussed in this video, and I'll link it here in case you missed it. If you want to wait for spontaneous labor, you should also be given the option of antenatal testing. Antenatal testing includes an ultrasound, usually around 40 to 41 weeks, to check the fluid volume around your baby to make sure there's enough fluid around your baby for it to be safe to stay pregnant, as well as non-stress tests which is where we monitor your baby's heart rate, usually for about 30 minutes at a time to make sure your baby is well oxygenated and your placenta is functioning well. And we can do those weekly. You should go over the risks and benefits of each with your healthcare provider. And I also think it's worth noting that even if you don't want to be induced at 39 weeks, say you want to give it until 40 weeks or 40 weeks in two days, you can make that decision. You can decide from any point when you've been offered induction, like, well, actually I want to give it this long. Since I only went three days past my due date with my first baby, I'm electing to wait for spontaneous labor with this one as well. 
I don't have any additional comorbidities like high blood pressure or diabetes. So I feel comfortable making that choice. I would also have to wrap my head around signing up for a completely different kind of birth because if I decided to be induced, I absolutely would have to be in a hospital. And if you've been following me, you know that I have a strong preference for home birth. Different choices are going to be right for different mothers, and that's okay. Something that really drives me nuts is the group of people who are basically anti-induction no matter what and love to say things like, oh, your baby will come when they're meant to come. You only have to attend one full-term stillbirth to know that is not always the case. You should not be bullied into an induction that you don't feel comfortable with, but you should be told what your options are. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I'm still crossing my fingers that labor starts soon. I've done a few rounds of acupuncture and I've had a few membrane sweeps, but nothing seems to have done the trick yet. I'll keep you guys posted, so make sure you subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Thank you so much for watching.